Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. Today's video, I'm going to share my experience of working with Sony cameras since 2015. I should give you some background about how I use a camera. I'm a professional photographer and I specialize mainly in property work. So I photograph a lot of properties for estate agents and also for holiday letting companies. That's typically three or four properties a day, three or four days a week. So you can see I'm giving my camera quite a lot of action. And that I actually have two Sony A7III's. I was first introduced to Sony with the A7 in 2015. I really loved how compact and neat it was, and it was still a full frame camera. So much lighter than the Nikon D850 I was using at the time. So in 2018, I decided I was gonna switch completely to Sony because I like their system. There wasn't really a viable mirrorless option from Nikon or from Canon for that matter. So the Sony was an obvious choice. And I didn't really regret it. The a7 III has been a great camera and I was probably one of the early adopters. I think it came out either late 2017 or early 2018. But in March of this year, I had my first issue. I have a 12 to 24 lens, which is my sort of workhorse lens for my property photography. I found it was not quite as sharp as it should be. Something wasn't quite right with the autofocus. So I reported it to Sony on the 10th of February. Because it wasn't a very definable problem, it actually was quite a struggle to get through to them. Let me explain a little bit how Sony's customer service works. So you ring customer support, you get put through to a call center, they ask you what the problem is. They then go away and check their knowledge base and see if they've got a solution for you. If they haven't, they send you an email with some suggestions of things you might try. For example, try with different lenses. Does that resolve the problem? Try resetting the camera to its factory defaults and also make sure that you've got the latest firmware installed. If that still doesn't work, you can go back to them and they'll then escalate it to a technical support team. So the first problem is you're not actually speaking to somebody who knows anything about cameras or photography. They've probably got some basic knowledge, but they're not really detailed enough to understand fully what you're talking about. Now, when it does escalate to the technical team, they often ask you to do things like send a video demonstrating the problem. In the case with my lens, I sent them sample images so that they could see. And I did these at various settings and so on and with different lenses so that they could check the problem was with the lens and not the camera. Now all this took quite a lot of time when the, each time you have to wait two days for their technical team to respond. So it wasn't until a month later when I was totally frustrated about not getting anywhere with them that uh, I expressed my frustration on the phone and eventually they agreed I should send the lens back for repair. It seems to me like they almost have a deliberate stalling tactic to stop you sending anything back to them. On the 29th of November, I noticed a problem with a Sony A7 body. I have two Sony A7 cameras, thank God. And one of them wasn't selecting the aperture properly. If I set it into manual mode, I could only get a choice of two or three apertures. If I set it into aperture priority, I could only get all the apertures if I deliberately selected having the rear dial as being my uh, selection dial. If I set it to the front dial, it, it showed the same problem of only selecting two apertures. In movie mode or video mode, if I set the camera to manual, which you often want to do because you don't want your settings changing during a video, it was jumping between exposures. Even though I'd manually set the aperture to f3.2, it was jumping up and down between 3.2, 2.8, 4.5, and it was changing the exposure, which is a real pain in the ass when you come to edit the video and you want everything to look consistent. Having run customer support, I went through the same old process of getting through the initial contact and trying to get it to escalate it to a technical team. They asked for a video demonstrating the problem, told me where to upload it, and one of the options was Dropbox. I duly did that. Unfortunately, for some reason, they couldn't access the Dropbox folder. So yesterday, again, I got to a point, really, 10 days I've been waiting, of total frustration. And I expressed my frustration 
as politely as I could to the customer service agent, explaining to him that I'd been using these cameras for five years, that I'm a professional photographer, I take 10,000 photos with their cameras every year, and I really just needed somebody to take my camera, have a look at it, and repair it, because I'm experienced enough to know when it's a fault and when it's just a setting issue, maybe that I've changed something and it's changed how the camera's operating. And I clearly knew that this was a fault, otherwise it wouldn't have shown up in video and it wouldn't have shown up the way it was doing. So eventually I got the chance to send it back and I've duly posted it off this morning. I'll let you know how long that takes. Now, it might take a bit longer because we have issues like postal strikes and so on going on in the UK and we're running up to Christmas. But what I wanted to say to you is, I used to be a Nikon user. When I had a fault with Nikon, they would generally resolve much more quickly. When I spoke to their customer service, the guy at the other end actually knew something about cameras and photography, and he could tell straight away whether I'd just got a setting wrong, or there was a factory reset required, or something like that. And if it wasn't, and usually they would get me, within 24 hours, a returns note issued so that I could send my camera off for repair. Now, the caveat to that is this was all pre-COVID, so it was probably 2016 when I last used Nikon's customer service. Might not be as good today. But I just wanted to warn anybody who's thinking about buying a Sony camera that if you do have a problem, you need to bear this in mind. You might well be without your camera or lens or whatever is faulty for at least a month because it's going to take you seven to ten days to get through customer service before you can send it back a couple of weeks turn around for the repair if you're lucky now in my case i have two two bodies so it's a little bit of a pain that i can't work with two cameras at the same time but i'm not completely stuck with my lens option, it was a bit more of a pain because I didn't have another wide-angle lens and I ended up going and buying one with a slightly different focal length, so I had some overlap with, with my 12 to 24. So that was my workaround, but it was £600 that I didn't really want to spend, but it was my only choice if I wanted to make a living every day. So that's what you've got to bear in mind. Make sure you have a backup. Having said that, I'm very happy with the Sony cameras. Uh, I still intend to stick with the brand. I'm about to, once this one's repaired, I'll get it upgraded to uh, maybe the new A7R4 or 5, depending on the, how I feel the, the value is at that time. I hope that helps anybody who's considering uh, buying a Sony camera. I'd love to hear your experience with Sony customer service or with any other camera manufacturer's customer service. I think it would be useful for other people who follow this channel. Let me know in the comments and uh, let's hear the feedback of how those camera manufacturers are treating their customers. Now go out, enjoy your camera and have some fun, take some lovely photos, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.